pour moins d'une minute. Top, H0, moins une minute. I don't know if you heard that. Hygienic arms to open that sets the ball rolling. Enjoy the liftoff. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage du vulcan. Allumage du ZAP et décollage. Richard Franklin of Airbus Defense and Space will also be speaking, as will Scott Richardson of Avanti Communication and Guy Perez, that's Guy Perez, I apologize, of OHB. These shots from all the replay from, all, from the replays at all the observation posts at the base, there are six or seven observation sites from differing views, including view from the beach, which is very popular here with the locals. Wonderful shots of Arian rising up into the late afternoon sky. Luce Fabregate is making her way to the podium. I can see she will be first to speak. de la manœuvre en roulis. Les paramètres bord sont nominaux. So at 16.30 local time and right on time, Ariane 5 began her mission lifting off from the ground here in French Guiana with a lot of fire and with two new satellites rising into the bright blue sky wonderful pictures trailing the exhaust flames of gold the two boosters providing 90 that's 90 percent of our thrust right now propelling the launcher along her trajectory at an ever higher velocity 775 tons at liftoff hard to believe but to get that sort of mass off the ground you need a lot of push Push we have, push you can see there, she's burning five tons of fuel every second. Two and a half tons are burning every second in each of the boosters. Plus, the core stage, the middle stage, burning another 300 kilos of fuel every second. Ariane 5 is now following the program in the onboard computer, which gives all the orders, including stage separations. We're going to see those in uh, just about uh, 20 seconds. We're in the first of four flight phases as we pass to the animation. We'll be describing each in turn, so you can follow Ariane on her way east across the Atlantic. Right now, the first flight phase, as you can see on the animation, the single first stage engine and the two boosters are burning. The boosters burn just over two minutes. Nominal, la trajectoire est nominal. Tous les paramètres bord sont normaux. The DDO says everything is, is perfect on board, and he's announced the separation of the boosters, and you can see that. That's the two points of light on the top, the flames of the two boosters flaming out. The single point of light below that is the lower stage, which continues to burn. Fine shots. We may even have shots of the fairing separation coming up in less than a minute. That'll make another two points of light in the bright blue sky. The single first stage in engine is burning now. Taken over from the uh, boosters, the boosters will fall. La propulsion uh, est nominale, la trajectoire est nominale, tous les paramètres bord sont normaux. DDO says everything is nominal on board. The boosters fall 500 kilometers from shore into a protected area. 
Look on your screen on the bottom, our altitude, 104 kilometers on the right, our speed, 2.27 kilometers per second. The speed we need to inject the satellites, roughly 8 or 9 Separation kilometers like per second as we've separated the fairing. There are actually two halves. There's another half on the uh, starboard side of the vehicle, which is out of camera range. We can separate the fairing now because we're out of the dense layers of the atmosphere. Over 100 kilometers up, there's neither friction nor heating, which could disturb the passengers. We could also, we can also now discard any dead weight to maximize the launcher's performance, and the fairing weighs two and a half tons. So we, so we can get rid of it now. So all is fine on board, coming up on four minutes on after a liftoff of the 7th Ariane flight of the year. As we look at some of the Ariane space people, we're going to look at, uh, we'll see Charlotte Besco in a minute and, and Didier Frev from, uh, from Knesset and de ISA. The uh, European space effort is a three-way affair among Ariane space, the European uh, Space Agency, ISA, and uh, CNES, the French Space Agency. You find them all here, along with the customers. Ariane Space in charge of operating the family of launchers and marketing the launch services and the Ariane program. ESA funding new programs. CNES overseeing coordination of all space base operations. The Guiana Space Center is the world's only dedicated commercial space base where Ariane Space operates a launcher family. That's Ariane 5 soon. Ariane 6. Soyuz and Vega soon to be the updated Vega C. A series of films coming up for you now on the customers. Up first, a look at Intelsat 39. We are in the second powered flight phase, the single engine core stage burning now. You can see that on the animation. Another two minutes to go roughly until it shuts down. In just two seconds, we will be picked up by our first downrange tracking station. That's over the border in Brazil, a place called Natal. The station run by the Brazilian Defense Department for the CNES in an agreement with ESA. It will see lower stage burnout and separation. All of Ariane's trajectory has been designed to be followed from ground course. Continuing our look at the passengers tonight, a first look at our second satellite, EDRSC. The Space Data Highway, you might have heard about it, a public-private partnership between ESA and Airbus Defense and Space, an optical fiber network in the sky. Comprising two geostationary satellites, the first, EDRS-A, was already launched in 2016. EDRS-C, tonight's uh, passenger, also hosting Avanti's Hylus 3 payload. Uh, more on that in a film later on. And there's a third EDRS satellite, D, EDRS-D. It's in the works for the Asia Pacific region. We are coming up on, on cutoff of the lower stage. You see on the animation the nozzle shutting down. And there's the separation of the stage. And you'll see the nozzle on the upper stage light up there. There we are. These three commands given by the onboard computer in about 13 seconds. The lower stage will fall into the Atlantic off the Gulf of Guinea. You remember our mass at liftoff, 775 tons. Well, we're down now after separation of the first stage and all the fuel gone. Total mass, 30, 30 tons. We're into the third and final powered flight phase, the single upper stage engine that'll burn until plus 25, 32 seconds, 16 minutes roughly in all. The job of the upper stage, it takes the satellites to their injection point, it positions them for separation and then releases them. That is its propulsion role, but she also has a second role, and that comes during Ariane Space's Ariane 5's ballistics phase after the power flight phase, which comes later in the flight. And we'll have more on that coming up. But for now, another film on our first passenger, Intelsat 39. You'll be hearing from their CEO, Stephen Spengler. Go down when she separates Intelsat 39. In about three minutes, her speed will be 8.8 .8 kilometers per second. When she releases the SILDA, that's the carrying structure for the second passenger, at plus 31 minutes, she'll be flying at 8.59 kilometers per second. And when she separates EDRSC at plus 33.31, plus 33.30, I think it should be, her speed will be down to 8.2 kilometers per second. With the power 
shut down. We're going to go to our next film, a look at Intelsat's first maneuvers after separation. We'll be back with more. Good evening. Light separation, Intelsat 39. Roughly about uh, 10 seconds. That's Intelsat 39. On the right of the screen, below that is the black bell shaped structure, is the SILDA. That's the carrying structure holding the second satellite. There's the scheduled separation. We're waiting for the DDO's confirmation. Separation du satellite Intelsat 39. And there we are, the first good news. As the men from Intelsat are nodding and pleased, you see they're holding, very politely holding their applause, because the mission, of course, is not over yet. We still have to separate our final passenger, EDRS-C. Intelsat 39 separated with a transversal spin. We promised you... To show, we promise you to show another place where people are hard at work tonight. Now we're going to go up there now. When choosing a space base, the Europeans wanted nearby hills where they could install radar de la and telemetry. Au profit du Silda. And this is the CVI, called the Quick Look Telemetry Display Control Center. It's on a hill just behind uh, here us here in Jupiter. These teams have all the means for receiving and processing, storing and analyzing all the data coming in from the ground stations along Ariane's flight path. The downrange tracking stations follow the launcher and right now these teams are following all the key flight data coming in by radar and telemetry to this post here and they report the flight status, they report all that data on the launcher back to the teams here in Jupiter and the announcements you hear made by the DDO come from the CVI. The information going to them first, and then relaying it here, also to the flight desk, of course, and to the launch complex operations manager. All part of the great information flow from points across the space space back to Jupiter. Here. Coming up on SILDA separation. You'll see that the SILDA will be pushed away from the mothership, just like the, the satellites were. And there you are. There's the scheduled separation of the SILDA. Separation du système de lancement double Ariane, le SILDA. And the DDO has confirmed it. Intelsat uh, 39 signal will be acquired. The first signal will be acquired by its station in Australia. Going to another film on the Super Data Highway. Right. Remember, we're representing years of work for many of these people. Separation du satellite EDRSC. Well, the final good news, as you can hear. The applause from the people here in Jupiter. Everybody happy. Arian 5 delivered her second passenger EDRSC out over the Indian Ocean. Handshake, smiles, cigars, and champagne forthcoming. So, from those very concentrated minutes just moments ago. You can see the change here in Jupiter. Very buoyant, very happy. The hugs and the kisses all across the Space Center and at the points and posts where people are following the launcher and the satellite. Work will be just beginning there at the different ground stations for both Intelsat 39 and EDRSC and at the other sites around the world where the satellite's first maneuvers are being monitored. Congratulations all around. EDRSC separated via a longitudinal spin different from the Intelsat 39, which was separated with transversal spin. Just wanted to note that. We're waiting, of course, now for the traditional post-separation speeches. The podium <laughs> in Jupiter being set up for our speakers, who will include Luce Fabriget, there in space. <clears throat> I believe John Harborn of Intelsat. Grant Gould from Maxar. We're going to go to a launch replay while we're reciting these names. You can relive those exciting moments half an hour ago. Zarian 5 took off from French Guiana here. Grant Gould from Maxar, we said. 